Hey there, this is Jonathan. In the following set of tutorials, we're going to take a look at website wireframing. Now, if you don't know, know much about website wireframing, um, I definitely suggest that you go and do a little bit of reading on it. Um, place to start would be the six revisions article on the ultimate guide to website wireframing. And I think that's it's well done. And I'm going to kind of skip down just a little bit because they've got a nice little section here about the difference between a wireframe, a mockup, and a prototype. And these are terms that sometimes are used interchangeably, but they say that they're three different things and I really do agree with them. A wireframe is a basic illustration of the structure and components of a web page. That's what they say. Um, it's usually the first step in the design process. You can do it in pencil and you can even do it with software. And we're going to look at a couple different ways to do that. Once you've gone through the wireframing process, then you want to go into the mock-up process where you create what um, the graphics are going to look like. What colors are we going to use? What are the backgrounds going to be? Um, and that's generally what you know the, the clients want to see. They want to see the mock-ups, but sometimes it's, it's really important to go through the wireframes to really figure out what goes on the page in the first place. That way, then you know what to actually design when you do your mock-up. Now, a prototype can be done either at the wireframe or the mock-up stage. You'll see a lot of functional prototypes that are done with wireframing that just allow people to kind of click through and figure out how something works. If you look at something like an app, this is for a mobile phone down here, um, how you go through the app is just as important as the done the design. In fact, it's probably even more important. So it's very important that you go through the process of doing the wireframes and developing even a prototype of just limited designs, but how does this functionally go through? Later on, you can actually take a mock-up, which is the complete design of something, and make a rich prototype of it um, using HTML and CSS and some other software, which we'll take a look at. But let's start back at the beginning, where you should really start, which is with a uh, pencil and paper doing some simple wireframes. Now, a designer typically starts off just kind of sketching out what um, a website is going to look like, where things should kind of go. Now, if you're a client looking at this, you probably have no idea what's really going on on this page. But the designer, since they're the ones that did it, should usually know what all this stuff means. So at this stage, it's really not ready to go to a client. The next stage might be improving those a little bit. Um, adding a little bit more definition about where things are, are going to be. Um, maybe even putting some text in there that you can actually read so that you know what it is, but still not ready to go to a client. You can do some very simple wireframes in software, um, and this one right here um, is okay, but it really doesn't tell you that much because you know you don't have a lot of information on the screen so it's not really giving you a full idea of this website although this looks more like it's some sort of app here's where we're getting to the stage and this is what's called a gray box wireframe where we're really being able to tell what's the layout of this um, website supposed to be and uh, what content is really supposed to be there and this is the stage that we should you know try and get to as designers um, before we really start designing this website in you know Photoshop or fireworks or some other software um, before we create those mock-ups and you can see from looking at this that it's pretty defined about what content goes where and what content is on the page now, the next step is maybe making that a little bit nicer and then even designing the true mock-up of this website. Um, this is designed by, uh, who knows, somebody on DeviantArt, um, which is kind of a nice little mock-up of a coffee website. Now, the nice thing about going to this stage is that if you've gone through the wireframing process and gotten okayed by your client on that wireframe, then you'll really nail the content that you need. And it makes the design stage much easier because you've really figured out what are the elements that you're going to be designing with. And you're not having to figure out as much of that stuff as you're trying to do all of your colors and layouts and images and everything else. So well, the wireframing is a really important process. Going to some software that you can use for wireframing, um, there's a number of different options that are out there. One of the ones that's really nice and that's free is called the Pencil Project. You can download it um, 
from uh, this website. You can see the address up here. And you can either download it as a um, plug-in kind of thing in addition to Firefox and add-on or as a standalone product. I've pretty much only used the standalone product. Um, but it's a really nice product and a lot of them work in similar ways. And I'm going to kind of skip through and look at some others before looking at that. Um, there's lots of other tools for this. This is a, a blog about 18 different tools. So some of the other tools they mention are things like the Just in Mind Prototyper, which also has a nice downloadable version, a free version as well as a paid version. And they can you can um, use this with UserNote um, or some other products out there. Here's another one called Jump Chart that allows you to do it. Another one called Hot Glue. And one of the things that's really nice about these types of um, systems like this, especially the ones that are online, is that they enable you to have um, things like commenting and multiple people reviewing them, sharing your products with others, um, other people being able to edit the product or project or um, make notes about the project. You can see right here's a little note right there and they're talking about managing user groups. Um, it's a really robust way to design wireframes. This one right here is another one where you can share them. Um, and let's see, Mockingbird. And one of the reasons I wanted to show this one is because this is an example of um, a set of wireframes that I created for a project. Now, one of the things about using the software is that typically you get things like widgets that you can bring out. You can drag over a text box, type in some text there, and it becomes an object that you can move around and you can use all the other different types of widgets that they have in the system. And a lot of these widgets are common to websites or mobile apps, either iOS or Android things. Um, depending upon which software you're using, they might have different widgets. But a lot of times, a lot of them are very, very similar. Like this one, the rectangle with the X, is a typical image replacement one. Now you'll see this is not as gray box oriented. This one's just kind of a white open frame. But by creating all of these wireframes, we really get an idea of exactly what's going to be on the page. and exactly what content needs to be on each page. Now, for this particular project, I did like 30-something different pages. And it's a lot of work for sure, but boy does it make life so much easier when you actually have to go and design the website or whatever application it is, because you really get an idea of exactly what you have to do. Now, there are other tools out there too, like this one I think is really neat. This one is Envision that allows you to, after you've gone through the wireframing process and even designed um, the mockups, you can upload your mockups and then turn them into realistic experiences of using the website without actually creating the website. So here's an example project that they have. And you'll notice that it looks like a real website, but if I hold down the shift key, it'll actually show me the different areas that I've made clickable. And I can then click on it, say, well, I'd like to put in a message, send that message, and it pops up, the message has been sent. I can go to change the password, save that password, I can go to the different tabs, put in an information here, send that message, and then when I'm done, log out. Now, all of this was done just with static images that have links created between them. And then you can even see comments about it if, you, if somebody wanted to comment on this page. This, uh, the process of going through wireframes and then even the gray box wireframes and then um, to these functional prototypes or mockups, I think are really quite um, useful for the design process. Now, when you actually get into designing these last things, instead of using software like the glue, and you'll see these are regular gray box ones, um, then we probably want to go to software like Fireworks to actually create our mockups because these are much more robust graphic environments and the reason I'm taking you to fireworks first is because it really is in in my opinion one of the better applications that you can use especially from Adobe a lot of people think well I'm gonna go to Photoshop because it's what I know but it's really important that you look at looking um, 
using fireworks for prototyping websites because of its robust set of features. And I'd say that there's a lot of people out there as well that agree. First off, you've got a lot of tools that are bitmap and vector and web-based tools, and you've got um, other tools like layers and stages and states and pages and symbols um, and there are other people in the field that I think you know agree with using fireworks in fact here's an article that says seven reasons why they ch why they chose fireworks over Photoshop first off you get pixel perfect control you've got the ability to have the web layer tools you can do gradients which is really quite nice um, the learning curves not too easy difficult. You've got lots of vector tools that you can use, so a lot of design flexibility. The pages, symbols, and styles is a big thing because with the pages you can see home, services, blog, and contact. You can have a lot of shared symbols between different pages and even things like the um, persistent navigation shared across pages and you can actually create functional pr prototypes which they're not mentioning. And there are other places like Here's another one, 37signals.com, that talks about how you can create functional prototypes in Fireworks, and you can't do that in Photoshop. So it's a great piece of software for you to consider, um, but most of all, make sure that you look at creating um, wireframes for your websites, because the more wireframes you do, um, the better your websites are going to be because it really allows you to think about the content and the features on your website without having to worry about all the design and colors and everything else and that focus um, is invaluable for creating effective and uh, fine-tuned websites so let's look in the next tutorial where we look at how we can create some of these um, wireframes with a couple common tools the prototyper by just in mind and the pencil project as well